If you wanted to know what would happen if you fell through the earth, it might be hard to come up with a satisfying answer on your own. For example, have you ever seen pictures or videos of people falling through the earth? Have you ever pictured yourself falling through the earth? How would you get back to the surface? This is a scary question, but the reality is more complicated than it seems. As thrill seekers, we want to constantly be surrounded by the adrenaline that we're used to having. If you're into base jumping or caving, why not take a tumble all the way through the earth? It's an adventure that will never get old and will always keep you coming back for more. What would happen to your speed when you reach the center of the earth? What happens to gravity at the center of the earth? Would you reach the other side? In order to properly address the question, we need to learn a little bit about gravity. A gravitational force is simply an interaction between two objects with mass. In this case, the objects to know about are you and the Earth. It is a force that acts at a distance, meaning that it can be felt without contact between the objects in question. It can be difficult to determine which object will hit the ground first when trying to perform such experiments in a vacuum. However, when the experiment is repeated in the open air, it becomes much easier to see which object will hit the ground first. While they may appear to be stationary, the lack of air resistance and the fact that gravity is constant means that their speed is just zero. As Albert Einstein puts it, if you couldn't see the background, it would be impossible to know that they were falling at all. Let's say that in this scenario, the Earth is a ball of fire with a smooth-walled vacuum tunnel built through it. Protected against the heat of the planet's core, you are safe from its extreme temperature. As you fall further into the Earth's center, there is less mass beneath you and more mass above you. It is then that what exactly happens? That all depends on your position. A skydiver will reach their terminal velocity after about 10 seconds as the effect of the air resistance and gravity are equal in magnitude. In the vacuum scenario, however, you will continue to accelerate well beyond this terminal velocity. You'll hit speeds of about 29,000 km per hour as you pass through the center of the Earth. As the speed of sound is about 343 meters per second, a car traveling at a speed of 4 to 5 kilometers per hour would have to do a lap around the world in about 68 minutes. After utilizing the results of recent calculations, physicist Alexander Klotz at McGill University estimated that the fall would take about 38 minutes and 11 seconds. This is assuming that Earth's gravitational pull is constant and the Earth has a perfect sphere shape. In reality, Earth's gravity only changes about 10% as you fall, and it starts to decrease a little after the first 3,000 kilometers. At Earth's core, gravity is at its weakest, so if you somehow managed to stop here, you would feel weightless. But as you tumble out of control, you're flying too fast and will be forced to pass through the center of the Earth, and gravity will start pulling in the opposite direction. As you approach the exit, your velocity will decrease and you'll gradually begin to slow down as gravity tries to pull you back into its clutches. If you don't grab on to the ledge at the end of this cliff, well, I'm sorry, but you're out of luck. As you fall back down, you'll be stuck in a free fall, oscillating back and forth infinitely like a yo-yo. The law of Hooke also states that the force of an elastic or spring is proportional to its extension. This means that if two people keep pulling on an elastic band, well, eventually, someone is going to get hurt badly. In this case, the elastic band represents the force of gravity in the Earth. As it stretches over a greater distance from its center, it becomes stronger and can pull you faster when jumping from a height if there is air resistance. If you make the jump and there is air resistance, you will only move at a maximum speed of 55 meters per second. So kick back, relax, and throw on a podcast or two. You'll be falling for two and a half days before you reach the other side of the Earth. If you're hoping to get to Australia, China, or wherever you're aiming for sooner, 
Make yourself as aerodynamic as possible by packing light. Tuck your legs and arms in, then stick your arms and legs out so that you'll have a slow, relaxing ride. If you're having a tough time balancing in a spin, spread your arms and legs wide to help you stay steady. And try not to spin too quickly otherwise you might get disoriented or pass out.